Yes. Yes. The band Yes. They disbanded in 1981. They were over. Done. And then what used to happen in those days is there were creative people at record companies that would imagine new configurations of supergroups. And there was a big fan of Trevor Rabin's. He had lots of fans. Uh, super talented musicians sing, play, guitar, keyboards, you know, compose. You, you guys know how talented he is. I guess it was a guy named Phil Carson at a big record company uh, suggested that he pair up. He'd already been in a band called Cinema with a couple of other Yes members, but they decided to try and put together Yes again with Trevor Rabin. Go listen to this record. I'm going to play you another song off this record that's my favorite called City of Love. That's going to happen in a few minutes. But of course, we know this song. It's the single. Um, and this turned out to be, so Trevor joined the band. He drove the record with his, these, most of the record were recreations, reimaginings, uh, explorations of his demos. So a lot of the record came from, from music he had already written. Oh, and the demo to Owner of a Lonely Heart, we have, <laughs> you gotta check this thing out. It's amazing. We're gonna, we're gonna put the link here so you can check out the demo. I found it this morning on YouTube. It's pretty amazing. It's a very different song. Uh, Trevor Horn had a lot to do with shaping Owner of a Lonely Heart into the song that we love. So it's always a combination. And you've got to realize that these are all super talented people sometimes fighting with each other. I mean, like fighting for weeks and months about crafting everything to the best of their ability. And in this case, it paid off because Yes's biggest selling record of all time. And it happened after the band was dead and had been disbanded. So it's pretty cool. Um, and the record sounds great. I mean, it's, it's crazy good rock. I mean, there's like five songs on there that I'm in love with. Before we move on, there's a special offer on the Masterclass. Click below if you want to check it out. If you want guitar lessons, it's getting pretty big. 1,800 videos, 150 hours. So special offer this weekend. So anyway, this song, uh, it was a guitar riff that Trevor Rabin wrote, uh, he says, while he was in the lavatory, which <laughs> I don't want to imagine that, but I think it's true. It's a simple song and a simple riff. Um, a lot of the stuff that happens in the verses is synclavier, which is a really radical keyboard, cutting-edge technology keyboard that was one of a few that were around back then. And I listened to the demo this morning, and in the chorus, so it goes. Oh, let's talk about the harmonizer first. So it's a fifth above and a fifth below. And I recreated it sort of with my Digitech whammy, which is just a fifth uh, above. But I believe, and check me on this, tell me what you guys think. I think it's probably like an H3000 they had, or whatever was around back then. And there's a fifth above and a fifth below, it sounds like. And then they're panning and doing all kinds of crazy stuff with it. But you can get pretty close to it with just a fifth above, you know. Um. That lick is not that far away from the kind of stuff I play. Pretty cool lick at the end. I got, I got something cool for you. Check this out. There is a video on YouTube of Trevor Rabin teaching this solo. Let's fire that up and let's check out the interviewer who has the best hair of anybody in the history of man. <laughs> one of the great in-your-face guitar solos of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, thank you. Yeah, pretty great, right? Right? Uh, there's, you, if you search, you can find interviews with Trevor Rabin, too. He's a pretty cool guy, very talented guy. And I'm sure you know this about Trevor Rabin, but he is one of the biggest film composers of all time. If you go to Spotify and you look at albums, they're just huge films for the last 20 years. So he was constantly, and that's really, you know, that's orchestrating. That's the kind of mind he is. So these, these are just, you know, t hugely talented people all getting together and doing the best they can to make the best music they possibly can. So it's, it's pretty great. I'm going to play you 
my favorite song. It's called City of Love. And I'm going to tune down. And I'm going to play a little of this because it's the coolest riff and it's the heaviest riff. And the actual, it's really simple at its core. Check this out. No woman, don't cry. My favorite part of this, and I love, but my favorite part of this is this. This is what's br brilliant about these guys. You, you, these guys are prog rockers. They can play classical virtuoso stuff all day, <clears throat> but they know that when they write a tune, they put up the heaviest drum beat in the world and they play the simplest riff in the world, which is. And then you sing and you build over that. It's just, it's, I just, I just love it. I'll play this again later in the live stream because it's just so fun to play over. Whew. Anyway, that's, I think that's my favorite song on this record. But like I say, there's about five standouts. And I used to work with Trevor Horn. I spent 15 years doing records with Trevor Horn, films and records. The first record I did with him was a Rod Stewart record. And then we did a film called Coyote Ugly. We did all kinds of stuff. He, he had a house up in Bel Air that he would record at. And then we'd work at the, all the local studios, you know, like A&M, which is now called Henson, all kinds of places. But uh, he, Trevor has even been here in this studio, Trevor Horn. Um, he's not as active right now as he used to be, but you'll see some pretty great interviews with him. Uh, I'm very, very grateful that I got to work with him. Yeah, once again, don't forget the Masterclass special offer this weekend if you want guitar lessons. Uh, the Masterclass is getting bigger all the time, and I'm actually working on an exercises category. It's not published yet, but uh, once I get 20 exercise episodes, I'm going to uh, publish that category. We also have a big beginners category that has over a hundred videos alone. So if you want to check out the 14 day free trial on the masterclass, it's, it's available with a, a special offer this weekend. So I'm going to play along with city of love for a minute. And, uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, and I'll look for some questions and start jamming. <laughs> That is a great comment. So good to see Tim needs more than one take. If you knew how many times I practiced this, you know. I mean, you know, learning a, a solo like that note for note, you know, I, I probably practiced it a hundred times. So I recommend it. It's, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a meditation in a way sometimes. If, you, if you're trying to learn a piece of music and over the course of a few days you actually practice it a lot, um, it's frustrating at times, 
but then it begins to gel and fall together. And the other thing that happens is sometimes when you memorize a piece of music, you get it and you go, I got it. And then you check it the next day and it's slipped away from you again. And then you have to bring it back. So it's always kind of in a state of flux. You know, I can imagine if you're, if you're like a concert pianist and you're doing, you know, high level, you know, classical concerts, you really have to practice, you know, every day and keep, well, it's just like the Thunderbirds. I saw this film about the, uh, uh, no, it was the Blue Angels. Okay, so there's this great documentary, documentary about the Blue Angels, you know, the guys who fly. They, if they don't practice every day, they slip. Think about that. If these guys in these fighter planes, they talk about this. If they skip, if like they practice Wednesday and they don't practice again until Saturday, they slip. Isn't that amazing? I just thought about that. So practice, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like this, you know, your, your whole musical journey is going to be like this. That's my, the best advice I can give you right now. Have not played the Modern Eagle 5 yet, but I'd love to try it. Um, I like the studio model too, with the two kind of single coilish pickups right there. I'm really warming up to that one. Um, really, really would like to try that. Definitely. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play along some more, and uh, I'm gonna try and play slow. Ooh, I just shrank my track in Pro Tools. We don't want that. How many of you guys press the wrong button on your computer frequently? I don't do it that often, but sometimes I do, and then it's like, what? <laughs> Harmonizer is on. Okay, as a contrast, I'm going to play slow now. I'm going to tune my D back up to E. Now let's play slow. How about that, right? Enough fast stuff. Here we go. Yeah, Univibe while playing slow phrases, James. I, you know, it's funny. I'm kind of obsessed right now. Pedal Pond, which is this little British company that's very highly regarded. They make somewhat of a bespoke Univibe. And I think I'm going to buy one and have them build me one. Uh, you know, Univibes, they, they kind of put you in a place that is... It's one place. I mean, you are, you know, you're either Hendrix or Robin Trower when you use your Univibe, it seems like. And that's cool. Um, and I haven't had one for a while. I do have the little Dunlop one, which is fine. But I'm going to, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go have this one built. You know, I'm going to contact Pedal Pond because I've been looking at it on, I did play on a C Seal record, Scorpio's Child, but I didn't play on Seal's Crazy. That was before I met Trevor Horn. So there is a video <clears throat> about a, a white Strat guitar. It says, nothing sounds like this. It's the Ed O'Brien guitar from Radiohead. And in that video, I play over the song Crazy by Seal. I'm very proud of this video. You can look at it on my channel. At the end of that video, I talk about the Seal record I played on and the two songs. I, even, I think I even play over one of the two songs. So I finally got to play on a Seal record. I'd known Trevor for a few years and things intersected and I finally got to play in a seal record, but that was well after crazy. I like the fractal, you, the learning curve is humongous. You gotta, you gotta make yourself into a scientist to, to use the fractal. And I like doing that occasionally because I'm not a scientist and it's, it's quite a challenge. <laughs> but the fractal is, it's just amazing. I have FM9 sitting right here and I can get sounds out of it. In fact, these clean sounds that you hear, Let's talk about this for one second. We'll go back to um, Owner of a Lonely Heart for just a second. And I, I found the demo to Owner of a Lonely Heart this morning. You know, you can find it. You know, it's like, 
uh, owner of a Lonely Heart demo, and then it's 90214 rather than 90215. So in Trevor, uh, Trevor Raven's demo, that's the actual, there's a, it's more guitaristic, that part. I think that's it. That's what I kind of heard, and I kind of just grabbed it out of air. So it, it's it's really really cool. But lastly, uh, owner of a lonely heart. It was that era where they would switch from radical heavy sounds to the kind of clean sound that I don't have set up today, which is the stereo chorus, heavily compressed stereo delay sound that goes like this. And that I could pop that out of the fractal in one second. That's great. This was great about the fractal. I could get the real clean sound. So, you know, if we go, I'm going to go right to it here. If we go after the solo, you have this breakdown and you can really hear the clean guitar. Right? So the fractal will give you that. I mean, I could get that, you know, I could switch from the heavy sound in the verse, in the chorus to that sound with my one button on my fractal. and uh, uh, But I don't have that set up. I kind of like it. This sounds more like Def Leppard to me when I go. Great, Nigel just put uh, Owner of a Lonely Heart in the chat. And later after the video, I'll put that link because uh, the chat will disappear after I do a few tweaks on this. Um, I, I like, this. It's certainly more modern, just to kind of palm mute and go. Yes, I read that too. The clean sound, they say, is a 12-string Rickenbacker. And then when you read further, there's a sentence that says, there is some dispute about that. So, But I, I, I saw the Trevor Horn video where he definitely calls it a Rickenbacker 12-string, and he would know because he was there and he recorded it. The other th cool thing is that Trevor says in his video about Trevor Horn, so the, we, you know, we've got to separate our Trevors, uh, Trevor Horn in his video says that he expected to record this in two hours. Just the guitar part. You know, you show up in the studio, we're going to do the power guitar part first. So he expected to record. He said it took him the whole day. And I understand that. In those days, you would perfect things sound-wise to the nth degree. And if you'll notice, on the record, it starts out with this hugely ambient version of... Like if I put more stuff on it. And then when the verse starts, it's a different sound and it shrinks down. But we would sit there, they would sit there, and just tweak forever until you got the greatest sound. There was no compromise. It was like nobody cared how expensive it was to burn up a whole day in the studio working on a power chord sound that was only one element to the record. Then, of course, the record ends up taking seven months or 17 months. That's how it was. It was pretty cool. You would perfect every, every detail, and and whatever amount of time it took was, you know, how long is it going to take? As long as it takes. You know, it was like, <laughs> how quick can you do it? It takes as long as it takes. It was pretty cool in that regard. I encourage you to, to check out all the YouTube videos, the, the YouTube video of Trevor teaching the solo. There are interviews with Trevor Rabin. There's a great interview with Trevor Horn about Owner of a Lonely Heart. And then finally, make sure you check out the original demo of Trevor Rabin's Owner of a Lonely Heart because you see the benefit of him handing it over to the rest of the team and particularly Trevor Horn. I mean, Trevor Horn, I worked with Trevor and he was so objective the thing about Trevor Horn is you would play a part and the part you, your goal with Trevor Horn was to play a part that he didn't listen to the next day and erase. Let me say that again. Your goal when you work for Trevor Horn is to play a part that he didn't listen to the next day and go, no, nah, we don't need that. I'm going to erase it. I mean, he's one of the most objective, demanding, you know, deep thinking, um, uncompromising 
uh, musicians in the world. So there you go. My best to Trevor Horn, and uh, never met Trevor Rabin, but my best to Trevor Raymond and everybody in Yes for making so much great music for us. So I'm going to play us out on City of Love for about a half a minute, and uh, thank you so much. Click the link for the Masterclass special offer discount if you want lessons.